Hi everyone, welcome back to my Solo Sessions project. This week I would like to play a piece for you that has been written by Tarek O'Regan. Um, the Prestine Festival, who I've been affiliated with for a number of years, uh, have commissioned a saxophone concerto from Tarek. And that was to have been premiered in August, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but of course that couldn't happen this year. And so Tarek has very cleverly written a kind of short excerpt of ideas that will eventually be a part of the concerto. And I think it's extraordinary that he's been able to put what is going to be a piece for saxophone and <laughs> orchestra um, into one single line, but he's done it and it's fabulous. And um, the, uh, the full work in its concerto form is going to be called Machine. And so this is Machine Excerpt. Eric, hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Amy, I'm very well. Good. I'm speaking to you from um, San Francisco, early in the morning here. Yeah, you're drinking yeah. coffee and I'm about to head into nine o'clock. <laughs> that, I mean, look, that's great. Either, either end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like we've had this amazing bond during lockdown because we've both got two-year-olds who are actually going to be starting little school um, nursery school in the next week or so so um and you've just gone through that today <laughs> yes i mean i think it's an ex i mean it's an extraordinary time for everyone um regardless i think on top of that it's an extraordinary time for the performing arts um considering uh the immense unprecedented restrictions on that um, and it's an extraordinary time, I think, especially for anyone that has somebody to care for, whether that's a young child or 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 or, or older person or anyone in their life that um, needs care at home. And so, yeah, I feel putting that all together has been um, quite um, daunting, quite challenging. Um, but ultimately, I think, it, you know, these things end up making you know you stronger individually and i think you know i think there are a lot of good things that are going to come out of this in the performing arts yeah. um i think there's probably probably a lot of good things that are kind of come out of this with regard to um how we think about people that have to care for people and uh that um yeah having a two-year-old at home during lockdown while trying to write music is interesting <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So, um, but it, you know, it's it's been fun, and, and it's it's a new now here in San Francisco. They've taken it pretty seriously with 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 the shutdown, pretty much consistently sheltering in place since March. So we're now slowly beginning to transition out of it. So I think it's going to be you know change change for everyone. But you know, I look, I look forward to it. Um, you can only, you know, look look forward to the next day and 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 you know try try get through to the end of the next day and not not worry too much and certainly not look back. I think. Yeah, absolutely, quite right. <laughs> um, but your your fantastic, brilliant, brilliant piece has um, certainly kept me going for the last few weeks. It's got a lot of notes. It's a lot of fun to play, and it's going to form part of a much bigger work and I was wondering if you could maybe tell us um, a little bit about it and also the title. Um, yeah you... sure so uh, the piece is called Machine and um, commissioned from Prestine uh, Festival for you and uh, the Festival Orchestra and that's what it will be um, eventually uh, and I think I'm going to write it for uh, the orchestra part of it will just be a string orchestra Partly because I'm sort of quite curious about limiting those sound worlds between a uh, soprano saxophone and a, and a string orchestra and sort of um, truly, really trying to blend those sounds together at points and then break them apart at other points. And I, I quite enjoy the challenges of working with a relatively um, limited setup without, without recourse to a larger orchestra and trying to get, trying to maximise the colours from really just two uh, types of sounds and sort of, as I said, mix them together and, and breaking them apart. So um, that was the plan before uh, COVID-19. Uh, I mean, that's still the long-term plan and that will be uh, 
you know, happening in the next year, year or two. Um, but obviously, uh, we adapt and plans change. And so, uh, for I think the first time in its history, Prestine Festival didn't happen in real in in real life. It happened um, online. And so, I created a sort of excerpt of ideas and uh, fragments from the 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 big work the 20 minute concerto uh, as a sort of three minute piece for solo uh for solo soprano saxophone and um what that piece does is uh which is also called machine excerpt from a work in progress um what the solo piece does a three minute solo piece does is try to um condense the ideas that I'm exploring in the larger work. And I think one of the interesting things that, I've, that I had, that I did with, for me anyway, in writing the solo piece is to um, try and compress uh, lines that, that would be uh, on the page, more polyphonic between uh, the, the orchestra and the soloist, compress them into a single line, a bit like, you know the piano reduction of of a symphonic work, but in this case, it, it it's being reduced to a, to a single line for, for soprano saxophone. The overall piece is influenced by a book uh, that I've been reading. I was reading when I when I started thinking seriously about what music I wanted to write, um, and the book's called Machine. It's by a friend of mine called Susan Steinberg, and it's not so much I'm not so much influenced by the 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 subject matter of the book itself. Um, but rather by uh, the fact that it's, on the one hand, a novel, but it's also independent short stories. And what I find interesting is this idea of, are you, are you reading lots of independent short stories or are you reading an interconnected whole? You know, does it matter? The transitions, therefore, are not that you'd expect from chapter to chapter to chapter in a novel, but actually... Um, quite uh, different, different tone, different pace, different sound, and it got to me. It got me thinking about writing a whole piece like that. That that instead of writing a sort of through composed twenty minute work whereby everything feels interconnected as it progresses through through the piece, chapter by chapter by chapter, rather thinking of tableau that transition quite violently perhaps or quite quite suddenly from one from one moment to the other but that the overall effect once you get to the end of reading or hearing this work is this idea of um a whole and i think i, I have no idea if this was the implication in the title of the book but for me this idea of a machine being made of lots of ind independent components that on the whole um, create a functioning whole, but independently of very much their own thing. They look differently, they function differently, they may um, work in, in other guises. And so it was quite nice to explore this idea as, as a solo work. Um, so one of the, you know, one of the, one of the key things is this idea of, of quite different uh, motives and ideas and, and uh, language being used between the string orchestra and uh, the soprano saxophone, particularly in the, in the, in the segment that I've um, written for you that exists now, um, these very fast um, 16th notes, the sort of uh, glittering, chattering material that is for strings, it's written for strings, and in between that is a much more lyrical uh, solo line. Um, and they sort of converse between each other, except it's a conversation that that doesn't always match up, they're not always listening to each other. So it's a sort of uh, two things that are slightly disconnected, but again, you, you should be able to feel the whole thing. So it's very interesting compressing that into a single line. I know we went back and forth quite a bit um, about how to get across that conversation between the 16s and the more sort of lyrical um, eighth notes and longer, longer uh, stretch of temporal ideas. And I, I love the I love the back and forth, and I love the fact that it, you you arrived at exactly where where it where it needs to be. And it's sort of so. And, and the the other thing is, you know, that then gives me an idea for how to develop that material yeah. when it comes to the concerto, which is now I know that yes, there are sections when those that material is going to be separated by 
orchestration between orchestra and soprano saxophone but also i now know that we i can swap material i can meld material together you know um the material can travel between the instruments quite easily um so yeah i mean that's sort of the 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 background to the to the to the whole piece and where we are with the solo piece and also how how it's ended up with this sort of um split personality um in the work and then also this sort of coda uh which is a, which is a sort of sudden shift mm. and that's what i that's the kind of thing that i'm interested in exploring in the uh, in the whole piece is these sudden shifts to things that recontextualize what you've heard before and um and it, i really love what you've done with that because it now the solo work now feels like this diptych between these two quite different voices except that within each section there are multiple personalities um so it does feel like a microcosm uh of uh, what will be the longer uh 20 minute piece i think it's utterly amazing that you're able to condense what will be a concerto into a solo piece and when when we first talked about it i thought how on earth is he going to do that i had no idea and i kind of thought oh maybe you'll send me some of what might become the cadenza or something um <laughs> but uh, but you have um and uh sent you know it, it is the most incredible and and wonderful piece to play and uh it's it's a real privilege to for us to hear you talk about it so thank you very much Tarek. <laughs> Thank you very much, Amy. It's been a delight to, to write for you from uh, continents and oceans apart <laughs> and uh, to feel connected uh, in this way, in this time of, uh, you know, enforced uh, separation between all of us and the performing arts. So I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful. Yeah, well, I look forward to seeing you again sometime. <laughs> yes, soon. Hope so. <laughs> okay, thanks, Tarek. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. 